Okay, it's done. So, again, here is that second object that I created using the MakerBot. And what you're seeing here is how it looks inside of 3D Studio Max. So we're going to bring up Max for a moment. Here's that object inside of Max. So one of the things that you need to be careful when you're creating objects in Max and so that they can properly print on a MakerBot, notice this angle here. This angle uh, towards the top of the object is not 45 degrees. It's less than 45 degrees. In other words, if it was lower down at 45 or lower, you're going to have problems with building it in the MakerBot. And therefore, I specifically redesigned the shape of this so it would be higher than 45, and you want it to go more vertically than horizontal. Anything that becomes really horizontal, it gets to a point where you really can't print it with a MakerBot. So that is the deal with that object. And this is what it looks like in 3D. And there are still issues that I'm trying to negotiate with this object. Uh, I've got a very thin kind of a rim to the top. The whole point of that rim is that that is going to have other pieces that are going to lay on it. Let's say a corner of one object is going to lay on there, and that corner has a shape that's going to get cut into it, the shape like this rim. But it's possible that I have to redesign this because the MakerBot really can't make a rim quite like this. Now, besides using uh, Max for creating objects, another program I recently discovered is a program called Sculptress, which really is an amazing program made by a gentleman. Uh, I think he's got a PhD, and I believe he's located out in either Sweden or Switzerland, or was. However, he made this program Sculptress. You can download it for, for free and use this program. Uh, the program Sculptress, S-C-U-L-P-T-R-I-S dot com. Now, up until uh, about a year and a couple months ago, prior to SIGGRAPH conference last year in L.A., that software was bought out by a company called Pixel Logic, and I'm sure many of you have heard of Pixel Logic, and many of you are familiar with ZBrush. So Sculptress works a lot like ZBrush, but not completely. It's not as sophisticated as ZBrush, but then again, it is free. Sculptress also allows you to do a certain kind of a 3D painting on the objects. But I just like the, the workflow of Sculptress and how it works. Now we're going to take a quick look at Sculptress. So for instance, here is Sculptress. The standard object is a ball. And you can do all this kind of uh, modeling on it. And it does a very uh, symmetric modeling. And again, I, I really like this program. It does a lot of great stuff. I, I've worked hours within this program. And so what I created within this program is this kind of uh, creature that I call uh, Alien Queen. And this is that creature. But I do have a workflow in that I make this creature in Sculptress but it's also hard to make a really flat bottom. Yet I have to have a flat bottom to build the object. So I take this object, save it as an OBJ file, and then I will open that object inside of 3D Studio Max. And here's that object inside of Max. And initially, when I bring it in, it's a huge amount of polygons. And the problem is, not only in Max and making for large files, but that GREP, REPG program, and the uh, being able to slice that up doing the generating of G code, it'll take forever. So therefore, we want to uh, minimize the effort on that G code program slicing by reducing the polygons in Max. Yes, it looks a little bit boxy and doesn't look as great now, but it'll still turn out okay once you end up building it. So I bring it into Max, reduce the polygons, and then I also cut the bottom to make it nice and flat to make it work. And then at that point, you can export out of 
3D Studio Max and STL file, which is the file that gets brought into RepG program. So, once I started building this kind of alien queen creature, I realized uh, one of the things people are building on MakerBots, they're building different small items that are actually usable items. And one of the, uh, the uh, guys at the Maker Fair was building these little bottle openers. And I've seen others building the same types of bottle openers. And there is a bottle opener that comes with the uh, RepG software that I thought, you know, might be interesting to make my own. So I came up with the idea that I would take this Alien Queen and go and turn it into a bottle opener. So the idea is that with producing that uh, Alien Queen creature, um, there are issues inherent with how I had built it. This is uh, an example of one of the builds of the Alien Queen. And I'll bring this up so you can see it. Uh, there are issues that are like little loops of plastic around towards the bottom of where like the ears or the back of the jaw might be. Uh, and it's because also this is a bit too drastic of an overhang. And because of that, it droops and things won't build quite right. And yet some of this actually did come out pretty good. The top is sliced off. That's because as I was doing the build process, uh, it took a while to build it. I literally started up the build, saw that it was working, waited for a couple minutes, then left the room, shut the door to let this continue building. And the problem is that that spool of plastic, it's very tight, tightly wound around the spool, and it does unwind. But the problem is <coughs> it's very tight kind of plastic. And as it's unwinding, it somehow sort of twisted itself. It got twisted, go, tried to go into the bot, and it twisted at the top of the bot, literally jammed it, and stopped the entire printing process. So that's why it got cut off. But I like how the details worked out in this. And again, this is the same uh, creature, but uh, redone a bit later. And at this point, a bit smaller. I was hoping by doing it smaller, I'd have less problems with the build. But it ended up being a little bit blobby. Also, in this build, I started making changes to the structure of the head of the creature so that instead of, let's say, the side of the creature coming out so much, I wanted it to come in more and therefore make it so you're not having anything that's too horizontal coming out. So I came up with the idea if I made a bottle opener, I could literally take this creature, this creature head, but now take the entire thing, cut the thing in half, lay it on its side, and now because it's on its side, and if I did this carefully, I wouldn't have any areas that are really jutting outwards like this and causing a problem in the build. So that's what you see in this screenshot is the uh, Alien Queen as a bottle opener on its side. So what I'm going to do here is just bring up the same object inside 3D Studio Max. So here's the object inside of 3D Studio Max. And again, what I essentially did is I brought this model in. I optimized the polygons to bring the polygon count down. Then I literally sliced it on its half and flipped it 90 degrees so it's on its side. Now it's on its side and it's ready to print inside of RepG software. All right, in the next frame what you're seeing is uh, at my day job, which has nothing to do with computer graphics and nothing to do with MakerBots, nothing to do with 3D. Uh, I work in the fashion industry by having to do with computer programs. So by day I'm a programmer. However, we have the small kitchenette where everybody goes in. There's a, a, a water machine there. There's a, a microwave, a toaster oven, a refrigerator. But the thing is, people always have this paper towel. It's sitting on the counter. It's always in the way. Every time I go in, I want to go to the microwave, open it up, put in my coffee. What's right in front but the paper towel? And I'm constantly moving it, and it's always been annoying. And I asked a long time ago, can't we just, can't the company just buy a simple little holder that, you know, props it up somewhere or something? No, nobody would do it. So I realized, why don't I just make it in uh, make it on my MakerBot. So here we are in Max, and as you can see here is the paper towel holder. And the idea is that they are two simple clips. So these clips, this is one of them, and I, at this point I'm just going to hide everything else. So after hiding everything else, what we're left with is just the actual clip, the paper towel holder. The idea is you have this kind of a uh, 
almost a U shape at the top around this area here that clips onto the counter. You just push it in, clip it in, and this simply goes down. And this part that protrudes, the paper towel will be stuck onto there. So you need two of them. They have to be opposites. And at that point, you can go ahead and use it. Now, one thing I'll just draw your attention to there it was. I thought, okay, let's make it an interesting design and just like have it, you know, go in a little bit here. Give it a little more, more of an interesting shape. However, once I go to try to print it, I bring it into the uh, RepG software. I found out it was a mistake to do this because the whole idea was to make this entire thing flat. This entire area needs to be flat and it's going to lay down in RepG to print it. So here I are in RepG. We're going to just open this up. So now you see after I brought this into RepG, what I actually did was flip this around so as I said it would be laying down. And this version, as you can see, is the final version where it's completely flat. It's completely flat all the way around. So in theory, it's a very simple build. It just builds everything straight up. No curves, no, nothing that should cause any complications in the actual building of this object. So the last thing I'm going to show is I just made this little kind of a house model inside of 3D Studio Max. And the idea was to do a couple little tests. So the tests are to see if I could print this object with a hole in the bottom and this tree. Let me just open up the Max file so you can see what it looks like. So here it is. Here's this kind of a house. And again, as I said, I had to figure out a way to go model this so I had this flat surface and yet I wanted to have a hole on the inside. But I had to also design it so I had the proper angles. Each of these roofs I built uh, a rectangular object, then I made it exactly 45 degrees, and then in building of the house, I brought up the house to meet up with that roof, but then I changed the actual roof structure, but as long as the house fit was um, modeled at an exactly 45 degree angle, everything would work right. Then the experimentation was to go and see, you know, what if I build objects so that it would end, essentially end up being two objects? So there's I built the tree, and I also built these kind of windows around the house. But the problem was when it did build it, you're constantly pouring out plastic, and it can't simply stop and start. So it's building this at a level at a time, and it would build one level of the house here. It would grow across to the tree and try to build the tree, but it would leave these kind of drippings going across, and it ended up making a very weird-looking model of this kind of a spider web going between it. Okay, this is an addendum to the last video. After doing the presentation, I met with Mark Cohen, who helped me work in my bot and make it work better, and actually made it fully functional. This device, I had this kind of a creature. This is what I also showed in the presentation. I actually got it printed now. It's supposed to be a bottle opener. I've also produced some other devices. So here's this device. It may be hard to see in the light. It's essentially, it'll clip onto a counter like this, but it was not made for this particular counter. At my day job, there is a counter that has a better, bigger thickness to it, and that clip fits on there, and it's essentially going to be a paper towel holder. Here was the first version of it, but since I worked with Mark, we got my device printing better, and notice there's a huge difference in the height printing. It's actually the exact same object, except now when it prints, it prints properly and it prints the correct height. However, the design was such that it was brittle and it broke off here when I dropped this by mistake. And then in usage, I installed it at my day job and somebody actually tried to pull a piece of paper towel off and this thing broke off. So I obviously have to make this much thicker. Here's some examples of the board game pieces. This is actually going to be a, the base of the board game where it's actually played upon and this piece should fit on it, <clears throat> this bottom, but it doesn't fit that well and I realize I need to redesign it a bit and now I've changed the design so now there's a hole through it and there's a hole in the bottom and now I'm also slightly redesigning this board piece which is printing right now and that'll fit better. Anyway, that's the end and should anybody have any questions about this presentation Feel free to find my email address on uh, YouTube and go ahead and send me questions.